So, all right, guys, I need y'all to have a seat. You're going to get notes. You're going to get pens. And before we get to tonight's message, I'm going to share with you a couple highlights, all right? I think, I think, I don't see any new faces tonight, so I don't need to do an introduction. But we got three things that are really important for y'all to keep in your mind right now. All right, so I want everyone, put your hands in the air and point one finger up. Highlight number one, we are not gathering next week. Why? Because I'm going to be in Israel. A lot of people are going to be in Israel. So I need you guys to be praying for our team, all right? All right, put your fingers in the air. Two. Announcement number two. The following week, November 2nd, what's happening? Do you all know? Oh my gosh, yes, the talent show is happening. We already got some people registering. You do not want to be left out. You have one week to register. So next Wednesday, lock it in. We got a couple teams. We got some solo acts. Y'all, if you got some talent, whether it's crazy or silly or funny or like just professional, register because I got a $50 Visa gift card for you if you're solo. And if you're in a team, I got $25 Chick-fil-A gift cards. Plus, if you just want to come for some entertainment and to cheer your friends on, come out because guess what? I'm getting Chick-fil-A for all y'all so you can have dinner, right? And Megan Tossi will be back and she's going to be performing more music. So you don't want to miss out on November 2nd. All right. Last announcement. At the end of the night, before you go, before you hear me on the car line, after life groups, there's a bin out in the foyer full of stuff. This is stuff y'all left. So make sure you check it and take what's yours. Don't take it if it's not yours. Don't be like, yo, that looks really cool. I think that's mine. Nope. Honor system. But if you know it's yours, take it home with you, okay? Because after a while, we just chuck it. And I don't want to do it because there's some nice stuff out there. All right. So without further ado, we have part two of the Unlimited Grace series. I want you guys to put your hands together for Mr. Jean and Mr. Rich. Come on down, guys. They are our teaching team tonight. All right. And before I hand off my mic, I want to pray for them with you guys. So I'm going to get behind them because they're a lot taller than me. I got to stand on the steps for this. And if I had two hands that I, I could hand move freely, then I would. So, Rich, you just got to know, like, I'm trying to with my elbow here. Okay. Y'all pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity for us to learn tonight. We want to know more about you. We want to learn specifically about your grace. And we thank you for this teaching team. Thank you for Mr. Jean. Thank you for Mr. Rich. And thank you for the message you put in their hearts. God, we praise you for the opportunity to receive, and we ask that you open our ears and our hearts to what you have for us. Fill this teaching team up with your peace right now, God, um, and just fill them up with your wisdom. And we trust you to help us understand what you have so that we can take it out into the world and apply it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all give it up for Anna. Yay! All right. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, what's up, John? How you doing, man? I mean, I could be better. Kind of iffy. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not glad good, to be here, but. Not a good day? No. I didn't eat lunch. I actually ate breakfast late. Mm. So my lunch and my breakfast were kind of the same. That's really unfortunate. Yeah. Am I the only one? Are you feeling, was it like that for you too? Or? I'm so glad you asked. I had the, one of the worst days, uh, I'm 42, my, maybe in 42 years on planet Earth, one of the worst days of my today. life. Today. Today. And we're teaching a message. Today. To, wow. Today. Yeah. That's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, pretty unfortunate. That is really unfortunate. Um, what about like your week? How's your, how's your week been? Like not just today, the, the rest of the Now week. that you say that, my actual week was kind of the same as today. Horrible? Not the best. Well, not horrible, but just not. It's pretty unfortunate. That's I don't so. Know. It's kind of so unfortunate. I don't know. So unfortunate. Are you Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Is it that time? <laughs> it's time for wheel, wheel of, of unfortunate. unfortunate. Wow. <laughs> okay. We did not steal it from Do Perfect. <laughs> Okay, sit down, hands down. Oh my gosh. All right, so let me explain. 
how the game works. Jean and I are going to select four students or student leaders. Student leaders can participate. Four students or student leaders are going to come up. Two over here, two over here. They will play Rochambeau, rock, paper, scissors. So there's going to be a winner from this pair and a winner from that pair. The two winners are going to face off and do rock, paper, scissors again. The overall winner of the four students is the winner, and they do not have to spin the wheel of unfortunate. They get to select of the three losers Ooh. who spins and has the delight of several <laughs> things that are on the wheel, which we'll display here in just a second. So we're going to do a uh, first round here. So we need four participants. I'll pick two. And, and I'll then pick you two. pick two. So okay. I'm going to step out here. Here's one. Two. I'll pick one right here. Stay right. And Come I'll down pick here, right one here. right here. <laughs> Come on the step. Come on the step. Is it a good thing that I picked you guys or a bad thing? I mean, things are pretty unfortunate up here. Let's let's go through the wheel real quick. You want to backfire? You, you want to explain what's on the wheel? <laughs> okay, so all right, every, listen up, listen up. So listen up. So every item that's on the wheel, it's on the table. It's on the table. It's on the wheel. So basically, the unfortunate person, right, or the individual that wins, right, the 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 total round will spin the wheel. And then that person gets to choose what the result of this wheel um, gets to do. So what do we have? We have someone to eat some anchovies. Yuck. Yeah. Fish in a can. It's been here for a couple months. It's in date, though. It's good. <laughs> we have um, spam. spam. Raw spam. Who's going to eat this? <laughs> We have my favorite, apple cider vinegar. Who's, whoever loses or wins, guess who needs to drink a cup of this? Okay. Or a spoonful of hot sauce. Okay. <laughs> Matthew. Or um, one that we have right here is um, toilet paper mummy selfie. So, not that bad. It's not that unfortunate. Not that unfortunate. Not that unfortunate. And then we have someone to sing Jesus Loves Me while gargling. So, yeah. But they get to choose. Do they want to gargle hot sauce or, or apple the, cider vinegar? Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> pretty gross. Okay. So, let's get to it. Okay. okay. It's one round. It's not one, two, three. Oh, God, so, it's one, two, three, shoot. And that's it. The winner is the winner. Are we clear? Are we clear over here? All right. So, we, we'll so go first over here. Each Ready? Other. So. Rock, paper, scissors. Ready? One, two, three, shoot. shoot. All, right. All right. Winner. You're up here. They weren't ready. All right. Two, You're three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Ooh. Oh, here we go. Face off. So now. Face off over now here. Now you two face off. All right, you call All it. All right. Oh. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> ready? One, two, three, sh no, it's one, two, three, shoot. Okay. <laughs> one, two, three, shoot. Oh, we have a winner. Ooh. Okay, that's okay. good. That's really good. That's really good. So, <laughs> you right. get to choose. You should be stressing. You're going to spin the wheel, but you get to choose who has to do the unfortunate thing. It can be contestant number one, <laughs> two, or three. <laughs> Who do you choose? This is where you make friends, by the way. <laughs> oh, we got brother sister matchup. Oh. Wow. No, that's, take it back. Nope. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Come on. Can I read it? No. We haven't spent it. Who do you choose? Addison. You want me to pick? No. Elijah. All right. You guys can have a seat. Elijah. All right. Spin the wheel. Just click the button. There it goes. And. 
Sing Jesus Loves Me while gargling. Do you want to gargle hot sauce? Oh, huh? my gosh. We can do water. We can do water. <laughs> we get some water. Hold on. All right. Well, he gets water. I'll start opening stuff up here. So um, everyone else but Elijah can get, to, yeah, you can sit down. All right, here we go. Elijah, you know the song, right? So gargling? Yeah. Gargling is like where you go like. Just, just put the water in and just sing Jesus Loves Me upside down. All right, we'll give him an A for effort. Give Elijah a round of applause. All right, I'm going to get two more, two more, two more. Two more, okay. Right here. Oh, my gosh. Let me clean this up here. <laughs> that was like a second long. All right, we got to move fast here. We'll do, our, we'll do you two real fast for right, Rochambeau right. while I'll they get started. You. I'll do you. One, you two, two, three, on. shoot. One, two, three, shoot. All right, One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. No. Oh, so step down here. Step down here. So you're in the final round. Final round. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, okay. He won right here. <laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, oh no. Sketchy, oh, sketchy, sketchy. Redo, redo. One, two, three, shoot. All right. Oh. Winner. Okay, okay. Who are you, you picking? You stay up here because he's going to pick something. Who are you picking? Back up, back up. Who are you picking? <laughs> Who? Who'd you pick? Brayden. Oh, Brayden. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys We're gonna can go spin sit the down. Wheel. You can sit down. You can Just sit push down. it. There it goes. <laughs> Spoonful of hot sauce. Spoonful of hot sauce. You want to get it ready? All right. Here, do it in a cup. A cup of hot sauce? Yeah, a cup of hot sauce. We changed it. That's what we do. You can sit down. You guys can sit down. No, I want to do it. There's no spoon. A spoonful amount. All right, comes out kind of slow. So I'll put a little extra just in case. You got this! It's a Oh my god! Look at that! Look how much came out! Let's see, let's see. Are you gonna drink it? The whole thing? Alright. <laughs> clap it up, clap it up! Clap it up! Here we go, here we go! Woo! Hey, if if you if you're not gonna make it, we got you covered right here. <laughs> oh! oh! Nice job! <laughs> Give it up for Brandon! What? All right, two more, two more, two more, four more, two more. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, so, you, no, you two, you two. Yeah, you two. Yeah, you two. Two more. Okay, okay. Come on. Awesome. <laughs> right here, right here. Face oh off, face God. off. Okay. Face off. Ready? One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. All right, One, face two, off. You come down here. Shoot. Oh, all right. Oh, here she we won. go. Here we go. Face off. Ooh. Oh, give it up. We got a winner. Woo! All right. <laughs> Who are you picking? Pick, pick Tyson. Oh, yes! it's Tyson. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay, you get to spin the wheel. I hope it lands on anchovy. I don't know if we can purposely make it do that. I think we can. All right, go ahead, spin it. We'll spin it until it gets there. 
<laughs> and we have. Oh, oh bro, respin, that's respin, so respin, bad. Respin, respin. I was drink vinegar. Oh, pickle pig's feet, but we do have spam. So what is that? You'll see. <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. All right, give it up for your winner. Give it up for your winner. Yeah. Oh, I'm not eating that. I'm, I'll eat a bite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not eating that. <laughs> oh, that oh. looks so unfortunate. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> oh, what's it smell like? <laughs> it smells bad. <laughs> face, face your peers. Just take a giant, like. Do it, do it. <laughs> Tyson! 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 Oh! 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 No, swallow it! No! No! Oh, give it up for Tyson! Oh, I think we got one more. We do one more. Yeah, we can do one more. One more. I want someone to eat the anchovies. Right. Have you gone? You haven't gone. All right, come on. Who hasn't gone yet? Yeah, Joshua, come on. Joshua, you just can go, bro. All right, come, bro. Yes. All right, Joshua. Joshua, come here. <laughs> okay, it's you two. All right, you ready? All right. It's rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, we got a winner here. Okay. Come down here. Okay, you want to do the answer? Ooh, Joshua won. All right. So he moves Joshua, on. Joshua, come, come down. If you stay here, you might actually no, front. have to drink vinegar. Come here. You're going to face off. All right, you guys handle it. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh. Ooh. You get right, to you pick. You get to pick. You get to pick who, who has to do the. <laughs> <laughs> we who? have a winner. Him? All right, yeah. Ooh, all right. All right. Just push it. You guys can go ahead and sit down. Thank you. Spin. <laughs> Joshua, you can go ahead and sit down. You need support? Okay, you need support? Drink vinegar. Oh. All, right, All right, let me set it you. up Good for job. you. All right, a cup. Smell it first. What's it smell like? What's it smell like? It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Whoa. God. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my gosh, it smells so bad, guys. It smells so Let's bad. Let's come down here. Let's come down here. Let's come down. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Okay, that's good. That's okay, good. that's good. Oh. <laughs> all right. Give all your contestants a round of oh applause. Good gosh. job, everybody. Oh my gosh. All right, who likes that game? Pretty fun, pretty unfortunate. Now I'm gonna give Mr. Rich his mic back. Thank you. Well, that was Gosh. definitely a lot of fun. It smells up here. It does, it smells like dog food and vinegar. <laughs> um, pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> All right, let's oh lock gosh. in. Let's lock in for uh, 20 minutes, okay? Because um, we did have some fun, but there's a point behind the game. Did it work? No. Okay. Um, there's a point behind the game, right? Like the, the game's called Wheel of Unfortunate. If you watch Do Perfect, you've obviously seen that game. We didn't go, <clears throat> we didn't go to the uh, extreme that those guys do. Okay, guys. All right, my dad used to say there's a time for serious business, right? So time of fun, we're good. Time for serious business here. So, But the point of the game was uh, unfortunate things happen 
on stage, uh, but unfortunately, things going to happen in life too, right? Like, and uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Of um, you know, when unfortunate things happen to you, or maybe you cause unfortunate, or you cause disappointment in somebody or somebody else, uh, and then just kind of how to deal with that. So we just got a couple key points. We're, we're not going to be up here forever, but you know, what we want to do is yes, we want to kind of move into a time of teaching. Um, and, and, and really just really gain some instruction. And hopefully you guys learn uh, from, from what John and I are talking about tonight. But the, the goal here is to really uh, develop uh, um, how we deal with disappointment and how we deal with um, unfortunate things in our life. So yeah. John's going to get us kicked off with, with the first point. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, again, you, you really have to sit back and answer the question, when disappointment happens to me, when unfortunate things happen to me, or I cause disappointment in somebody else, what do I do now, hmm. right? And the goal tonight is to answer that question for you, right? Clap twice if you're with me. Clap twice if you're with me, all right? Who can raise their hand and say, I have been disappointed before by somebody? Every, all of us, right? Hands up everywhere, right? Now, the question is, what did you do in that moment, hmm. right? What did you do in that moment? And tonight, we want to answer that question of what we should do in that moment. So, John, will get us started. That's good. So, yeah, like Rich said, we have four points that we want to uh, bring home uh, tonight. Um, so, and kind of Rich has already hinted at the one that I'm going to talk about, uh, which is that reality check number one is that this is nothing new. Disappointments are anything new. Um, they, weren't, they weren't something to be surprised of in the past or in the future, so if you haven't been disappointed yet, and all of you guys have raised your hands, you're most likely going to be disappointed again in the future, or you most likely will disappoint someone on purpose, by accident, um, you know, there's just hurt, there's misunderstandings, there's gossip, there's revenge, there's letdowns going on in this world, and even if you um, don't cause it or do it to someone else, someone else is bound to Kind of do it to you because we live in a sinful world. Um, so again, we should we should just not be surprised. Um, so the news is that we've been letting each other down since after the Garden of Eden. So so that's the reality. Um, but but now what? Now the good news is that not only have we not changed, which we just said, but also God hasn't changed. So that kind of gives you some hope. All right, there is someone out there that hasn't changed. There's someone out there who is not disappointing people. Um, So that gives us hope. Um, So God has not changed over time. So now what? So we look to him. We look to God. We ask God, how can we be more like you? I mean, this is as simple as, as it can get. We just read his word. We look at, you know, his character um, how is he that he can not disappoint someone? How can we be more like that? And God, there's tons of people disappointing you. How do you react when people disappoint you so that way we can do the same thing? Um, so, like I said, we look to God for his goodness and his grace um, because God is faithful to uh, forgive us and willing to forgive us. So whenever you disappoint someone in life, what should you do? Um, well, not only should you seek um, to say sorry to those individuals that you've disappointed, um, but also you could seek to say sorry to God if you sin against someone else. Um, and you know that because of his grace and his goodness, he is willing and able to forgive you, as we, are, as we see in, I mean, all across the Bible. Uh, but if you guys want a, l- a little bit of homework, I have here my notes that uh, Hebrews chapter 10 possibly indicates how um, because of Jesus, we now have an open door to come to God and say, hey, God, uh, I've disappointed my brother or sister, um, and I want to change. I want to change the circumstance. I want to change internally. I I want everything to change. And so uh, I come to you to give me hope and just instruct me on how to move on with this. Okay, so now that I said all that, now the teaching that we're doing tonight is really centered around a story found in Matthew chapter 26. Um, and the story that we will be talking about is centered around Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to, uh, I believe, 57. So I'm going to go ahead and read 
Matthew chapter 26, 36 through 45, um, just to see what happens in that story. So a little bit of the background. So the story that I'm going to read is uh, towards the tail end of Jesus' lifetime um, at 33 years old. And so um, you'll see that Jesus is very nervous or stressed. Um, um, basically, he knows what will happen. He knows that someone named Judas that we talked about uh, last week will betray him. And um, basically, he knows that after that betrayal, he's going to get crucified. And so who wouldn't be all kinds of nervous? And so he does the right thing. Step number one, he goes to the, to the Father and he goes to pray. And just, um, just to talk to God and just, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, so basically what I'm trying to get at is that while he's going out to pray, he's with his disciples and he asks his disciples, all right, guys, I'm giving you one job. If there's one time that I need you guys is today or tonight. And all I need you to do, just one thing, one simple thing, is to just stay up with me and pray with me. It's a big night for me, guys. Have you guys ever had one job? <laughs> so let's see what they do with that one job. I'm going to read verse 36 through 45. Okay, so Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to the disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. He was nervous. He was, I mean, gosh, he's about to be crucified. So he told them, my soul is very sor sorrowful and even to death. Remain here and watch with me. That's all I'm asking, please. And going a little farther, farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said, Peter, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. I know that you're willing, Peter, but the flesh is weak. All right, I'm going to go back up there. So again, for the second time, he went and prayed, Jesus. He said, my father, if I cannot pass, if I cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So they were knocked out. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. And then he came to the disciples and said to them, sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. So... Basically, he gave them one job, and they failed. <laughs> Have you guys ever been handed one job and disappointed someone? Maybe on purpose, not on purpose. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now and transition to Mr. Rich, Mr. Rich because he's going to let us know about some other approaches that we can take after we or others disappoint each other. Right. So these guys had one job, don't fall asleep, which by the way is your job tonight, okay? Don't fall asleep, <laughs> stay awake, right? But that's literally their job. Jesus said, I'm going to pray. You guys stay here, you don't have to worry about the animals, you don't have to make dinner, uh, you, you don't have to take care of any kids, just stay awake, that's all you gotta do, stay awake. And he told them not once, not twice, three, three times. times, and three times they failed. He came back from praying, and there they lie sleeping. Which brings us to point number two. Do you think Jesus was disappointed the first time? Yeah, probably. Mm. What about the second time? Yeah. The third time, he's probably like, guys, seriously. <laughs> one job, right? He had one job. So Jesus had every right to be disappointed. So when disappointment happens to you, right? Mm. Uh, think about something that happened this week, this month, this year, this past year where you had disappointment. Maybe you didn't make the team that you wanted to make. Maybe you didn't get the grade that you wanted to make. Uh, maybe uh, if you're in high school, you wanted to be on homecoming court and it, did, it didn't happen, right? Or maybe you were trying to get to 10,000 followers on IG and you didn't make it yet, right? I don't know. Like, but there's some disappointment that maybe has set in this past week, 
this past month or this past year. My question is, how did you deal with it? And in life, you really can deal with disappointment in two areas. You can choose to dwell on it, or you can choose to move on, right? And I don't know, like, if you can really get anything of what we're talking about tonight, I really hope you get this, and I hope you get it at your age, because it doesn't change when you're 10, 20, 30, 50, 70, until you leave the earth, right? Those are your two options. Like, things are going to happen to you, unfortunate things on the wheel, right? And you can either be like, oh, man, I'm still dwelling on this fact that this happened to me, or you can choose to move on, right? Now, if you look at what happened in verse 46, again, they fell asleep three times, and then Jesus said something to them. He's, he's full of disappointment, right? He definitely is full of disappointment at this point. But he says, get up, let us be going, right? That's what he told them. He came back there asleep. He came back there asleep. He came back there asleep. He probably could have said and maybe should have said, guys, I, I asked you to stay awake. He could have reprimanded them. You know what that word means, right? Reprimanded them, like, like really got into their tail, like, hey, like I told you, like he could have yelled at them like right. a parent may yell at a child, right? Uh, a respectfully <laughs> yell at a child, right? Or like discipline, he could have disciplined them. He said, oh, you guys are disciples? I'm kicking you out of the disciple group, right? You were the, part of the 12, now we're down to eight because you can't stay awake. He could, he could have done that, yeah. right? He could have told God, God, well, he is God, right? But you get what I'm saying, right? He could have like told the father like, hey, these guys that you said, I should choose, like, look what they're doing, they're sleeping. He could have done all of these things, and maybe he should have, but what did he do? He said, get up, let us be going, right? He could have done all these things, but in a small way, he just said, okay, I'm going to move on. He could have, and what he's saying there when he says, get up, let us be going, he's saying, yeah, I'm mad. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed all this happened but I, I personally have to move on, right? It's a great life lesson that he shows us here. Don't you, like, so I'm a parent. My kids can't answer this question. But sometimes as a kid, don't you wish your parents would just be like, gosh, I wish they would let that go, right? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Gosh, I wish they would just move on, Yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I never thought about, like, your own kid, like, responding to, like, <laughs> The rhetorical question, by the way, rhetorical means you don't answer it out loud. Um, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like, don't you wish sometimes, like, the, your parent would just be like, man, I just wish they would forget about it. Or I wish we could just kind of, like, reset. I know it happened, but I just want everybody to move on. Right. That's exactly what Jesus is modeling in really five, six short words. Get up, let us be going. Now, the words that are used here, get up, is the Greek word agirio. Can you say that? Azurio? Okay. Azurio means to like rise. It means to awaken, right? It means to like picture yourself being like totally just like almost like in a comatose state. And then all of a sudden you, all your faculties come back uh, to you. That's what he's saying. He's saying you are sleeping. You are in total obscurity. You need to come out of non-existence. He's basically saying disciples, it's time to wake up. It's not just this idea of waking up because they are sleeping. It's time of like, we have to move on from this moment, right? So it's a great lesson in disappointment saying, whatever's happening, we've got to move past it. And this is a great life skill. This is a great biblical skill because it's not only about disappointment. So like, I'm really speaking in terms of people disappointing you, mm -hmm. but make no mistake about it. Like you are going to disappoint other people, right? You will let your parents down at some point in time. You will let your friend group down, maybe on purpose, maybe not. I don't know, right? You will let a boss down one day. Hey, the assignment was due or the, uh, you know, I needed the project done by Thursday and you turn it in on Monday. Like that, you're going to create disappointment in people, sometimes on purpose, sometimes on not. Those things are going to happen. So if you can learn this skill right now, that's great. But you have to move past shame. You have to move past your own guilt. You have to move past regrets. You have to move past uh, forgiveness. Who's really good at forgiving? Well, it takes a lot of work sometimes, right? Like, yeah. I'm pretty good at holding grudges, right? Like, if you kind of cross me, I, I can hold a grudge just as good as anybody, right? I'm good at that, but that's not biblical, guys, gals. Like, it's not, right? The Bible says that Jesus gives us this great example. It says, we have got to move on. 
And there's a reason why we have to move on. Jean's going to explain that in just a second mm-hmm. here because there's a really, really critical reason why we've got to move past what's going on. But I want you to think about disappointment in the, in the, in the lens or in the vein of like a tiki torch or like a lantern, right? <clears throat> so if you have a lantern, there's usually some type of gas in the lantern, right? There's like either like citronella oil or maybe it's propane, but... If there's no gas, then there's no flame, right? So the flame that I'm referencing is disappointment, is regret, right? Is shame, it's guilt, it's unforgiveness, all those things, right? The reason that will, flame will always like burn is because the oil that you're putting in it is dwelling. Like you're just focused on it, right? So if you can just remove that flame or, that, or remove that fuel, the flame will go out. The more and more you dwell on mistakes, regret, disappointment, people who hurt you, people you hurt. The more you kind of focus on that and you don't move on. Now, I want to be clear. What I'm not saying is you just run around with reckless abandon, hurting people, or let people hurt you and just say, well, it's okay. Like, you know, Rich said, like, it's just part of, I just got to move on, right? It's not okay to be a doormat and it's not okay to, like, purposely, intentionally, like, hurt other people, um, like, intentionally, right? That's not, that's what I'm saying, but there are just times in life where it just didn't go your way. You had to drink vinegar, right? You had to drink vinegar. And you might not like it, but you did it. And you have a choice now to either say, well, that was unfortunate and I'm moving on. Or you can think about that the rest of today, tomorrow, the rest of the week, and you can let it wreck your life. You, you literally can. Or you can choose to move on. And the reason you move on is what John's going to explain next. It all started when I drank vinegar at church. <laughs> all the disappointment villain, in my or, life. A villain origin story. <laughs> it started when I drank vinegar. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that was, that was good, Rich. So, the question is, why? Or give me a reason why we should possibly move on gracefully with the grace that God is offering us. Well, is remember that the mission is bigger than the moment. So in the context with Jesus, I mean, the mission that he was trying to accomplish was bigger than that misunderstanding or that disappointment that um, he felt from the disciples' behavior. So something that you need to know, and I feel like, I feel like this is a common thread throughout the scriptures, um, and that hopefully you are able to just remember this point, this, just this sentence, is that God's will is not threatened by disappointment or when people let us down. So God's will is not threatened by disappointment, uh, disappointment or when other people let us down. So there may be some times in your life that you, God may call you to do something to, um, I don't know, pursue, pursue school, I don't know, and um, somehow he makes a way, but as you pursue school, as you pursue that ministry, you encounter rude people, that's a disappointment. You encounter, you know, just certain things, I'm just coming up for, with an example here, so sometimes God will call you to something, and in that path, you may be disappointed. And it's not because God is disappointing you, but just because that's a reality of life. However, that disappointment is not a threat to the will that God has in your life. So I'm going to give you the best example that we can find in Scripture. Um, so what do you guys think is the biggest disappointment in history? R- rhetorical question, maybe. Uh, I'll give you a chance. What is it? Wow. Yes, it is the death of Jesus. I mean, think about it. God came to redeem us. He came down to earth himself, and he dies. I mean, that's a disappointment. Um, Except that God is so almighty, so powerful, that he can literally take the death of his son, seemingly disappointment, and turn it for literally the biggest blessing that we have all could have been experiencing through that disappointment. God has redeemed all of humanity. Now we can have a relationship with him. So, again, sometimes in your life you may be called into action. Um, sometimes God may call you into ministry, into, into whatever, into a job. 
Um, and disappointments are bound to happen. However, what you need to remember is that God has the final word. So there's a prophet. I think his name, I think it was Jeremiah. Um, but don't quote me on that. There's a prophet um, who experienced, uh, his ministry was about, I think, 33 years long and did not see a single convert. Yet he was being obedient to the call that God gave him to go preach to his people. Wow. You really need to trust God that he has a final word to, um, to just keep pushing through 33 years of preaching to people, and none of them turn around and say, hey, man, thank you for that. I needed that. Thank you for speaking life. No. Instead, he was mocked, and gosh. So we must choose to listen to the voice of grace that tells us that we should trust God in the midst of bad times, or else we'll be kind of living in defeat um, if we don't choose to move on or um, to remember that the mission of God is not threatened by disappointments. So I'm going to give you two dangers of not relying on God whenever you, whenever you encounter disappointment in your life. So just two dangers. Whenever, whenever you choose to focus on your lack of abilities instead of God's infinite abilities, you just can sit, soak, and sour. <laughs> So we need to remember to rely on, on God whenever people disappoint us. Another thing that can happen whenever we choose to not rely on God, whenever um, people disappoint us, is that we could just become bitter against those people. So God's grace allows us to not become bitter towards those who disappoint us. So um, I just want you to remember one thing is that in all of this, we need to remember that it is impossible for God to let us down. Because somehow, when all is said and done, when all is said and done, he can turn all things for our good and his glory, even when people disappoint us, even when we're, doing the, even when we're being obedient to God's call, but people disappoint us through that call. I mean, there's literally nothing that can stop God's will, even the death of the Son of the Father or Jesus Christ. Um, I mean, God turned that death into the biggest blessing that we could ever see. So... Pushing it back to you, to your math equation. I'm excited to hear this one. Okay. I'm excited to talk about it. You guys have <laughs> one job. It's to stay awake. Just like the, yeah, right? All right. Well, like, to recap, this is the final point. But to start out, like, disappointment has been going on since the creation of the planet that you live on. That's point one. It's been going on for a long, long time, right? So know that. Number two, you can choose to either dwell on the disappointment or you can choose to move on. I don't know if we can go back a few slides. I, I, I missed it, but there's an elevation worship song. Um, we actually sing it at church from time to time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, here in the presence of the Lord. But it's got a, a part of the song you see at the top. And it says, I'm not going to sing it because oh. I think I'm a great singer, but I don't want to... I don't want to show off my <laughs> I don't want to show off my skills like the topic of the message is unfortunate that would be very fortunate if you sang for us. So it would be really good. Yeah. So we have to keep it unfortunate. No, I'm not going to say. It. <laughs> but the top the top says I know your past is broken. You can move on. It's over now, right? Like that's that's kind of the message in a nutshell. Like what's behind us is behind us, right? And we have to move past that. That was point two. And the reason we move past it is what Jean just explained, that the mission's bigger than the moment. The reason Jesus didn't dwell on how disappointed he was of what was happening to the disciples and they fell asleep over time because he had to go to the cross, right? right? He knew that the mission for his life was bigger. The same is true for you, right? The same is, what's in front of you is much more important than what's behind you. Always, always, Right? And so you have to focus on what's in front of you. You have to get your heart. Anna uses the word heart, heart posture all the time. It's so right. It's the right saying. Put your heart posture in what's in front of you. Put your mind in what's in front of you. Put your focus on what's in front of you. Put your desires on what's in front of you. Put your intentions. Put your hard work in what's in front of you. Because if you just focus on what's behind you, that flame that I kept talking about, the flame just keeps going, right? You're just fueling that flame. The last point that we have here, sorry to back you up, Sid, 
um, is point number four. So we're all in high school. Well, I'm not in high school. We're all in middle school. Well, I'm not in middle school. But you guys are all in high school or middle school, right? And so I love this because, um, listen, uh, school's hard sometimes, right? Uh, and there's certain subjects like PE and sewing and uh, whatever sewing. else. Underwater basketball, basket weaving, those are easy classes. And then you have hard classes like math, English, uh, history, pre-algebra, Spanish too. All right. Lunch is easy. Okay. Lunch is pretty hard. Okay. All right. You get the idea, right? Some classes are hard. Some classes are easier, Right. Today, we're going to focus on one of the harder classes. So I, uh, I, I put up a math formula. I don't know if we can go to it, right? So here's a, uh, a math equation. Grace equals action plus grace. What's that symbol right there? Greater than sin. Who here thinks math is their best subject? All right, we got a few. Oh, wow. Who really loves English? <laughs> Way less hands. <laughs> Way less hands. All right. So we're going to focus on the first part of this equation. Clap twice if you're with me. We're going to focus on the first part. Grace equals action. And we're going to start in the English subject, right? And you're saying, well, it's got an equal sign. That's a math problem. And the answer is you're probably right, but you're going to have to take my word for it that we're talking about English, right? So grace equals action. This is English pop quiz. Anna mentioned it last week, and she's exactly right. The word grace that we're talking about, the word is a verb. It's a verb, right? A verb means it's an action word, right? It means that we should be doing grace or showing grace or acting grace or somehow receiving grace. Grace is done unto us. And you say, well, what in the world does that mean? So here's your English lesson. Grace, the word, is not an adjective. It can be, but it's not in the terms of what we're talking about tonight. It's not a description. Grace isn't some just nice word to say while you're at church on Wednesday and Sunday or whatever church setting that you're at or maybe life groups. That, that's not what grace is. A lot of times you'll see the word grace on like coffee mugs. The grace of the Lord is with you, Jean. On rugs. Uh, you go to all, you know, all your church friend's house. They got all the pictures on the wall, right? You know, grace. grace. Grace of the Lord protects this house, right? My family has that. All that is true, right? But what we're talking about tonight is the idea of grace being an action word, a verb. It's bigger all than all. It's, grace is bigger than all of that, right? Yes, it's bigger than the painting. Yes, it's bigger than the coffee mug. Yes, it's bigger than the word as an adjective. But it's only bigger when it's put into action. It has to be put into action. And that's really kind of the secret through all this. It's applied. So Jesus in this story is completely let down by his disciples. By the way, this isn't the first time the disciples have let Jesus down, right? So if you know like Bible history, this account that we're talking about in Matthew isn't the first time these guys have made some bonehead decisions, right? Mm -hmm. It has happened before, right? And so this is not the first time. And he shows them grace by saying, get up, let us be going. And then what Jean described with Judas is now he's completely betrayed by a quote-unquote follower of his, mm. right? A follower of hers. Now, if he could be mad at the disciples for falling asleep, don't you think he could be a little upset or disappointed or feel unfortunate that a confidant of his, a friend of his, someone that's in his inner circle has now betrayed him? He could be seriously upset with that person, Think about your closest best friend that you have. Picture that person in your mind right now, and they have betrayed you tomorrow or today. You would be very, very, very upset. True? Yep. Right? That's exactly what's happened here. Clap twice if you're with me. Stay with me. He, he could be, you would be very upset, and he could be very upset in this moment, but he's not. If you look at verse 50 in this text, it says, he calls Judas friend. It says, friend, do what you have come to do. Do what you, he's, he's saying, just do what you got to do. Like he shows him grace in this very intense moment and he knows what's about to happen to him. And what you have to understand tonight is that grace with empty words and empty actions is exactly that. It's empty, right? 
So you're saying, well, I'm a great, I show a lot of grace to my brother and sister. I show grace to my parents. I show grace to my, but if you just like speak it, but don't actually walk it out or live it out, it's just, it's just empty actions. That's why I appreciate guys like Jean, right? And people and leaders that are, are in this, in Waterstone Young. Like there's people that say things and then there's people that say things and back them up. You know what I'm saying? You got to get around people like that, right? That say when they kind of walk it, or when they talk it, they actually walk it in the, same, in the same lane, right? And that's what's happening here, right? He's showing grace, but he's also acting it out as well. So what I'm trying to say is grace is something that you have to work at, right? You have to work at it. So now the question is how? Say how. How, how do I work out grace? Well, you have to have a starting point. You have to start somewhere, right? You have to start somewhere. And, you know, you have to think about the things that are, um, coming out of your mouth, things that you do, you're going to mess up in life. And disappointment's going to happen, right? But you have to have a starting point as it relates to grace. And you've got to speak grace to those. You have to be very intentional about that. Uh, I don't know if we have Ephesians 4.29. Look what this verse says. And the, and the reality is, like, when disappointment happens to you, you'll have an opportunity. Like, let's say your friend tomorrow, like, disappoints you. I don't know what they do, but they disappoint you. In that moment, you can make your friend feel really, really crummy, or you can somehow build them back up, right? And again, that comes down to choices. I can't make these choices for you. You have to make choices, right? But you've been disappointed. You can, you can really pile on top of your friend and say, I really wish you didn't do that. Shame on you, blah, blah, blah. You could really make them feel terrible, or you can do the opposite. Look what Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. How much? No. None. None, zero corrupting talk out of your mouth, but only talk such as is good for building up as it fits the occasion that it may give, give grace to those who hear. So why shouldn't we speak bad? Because it allows space for grace. Y'all see that in that verse? And that's exactly what's happened here. So that's English lesson, right? English lesson. Now we're going to get to the math problem, which is the second part. Grace is greater than, that's a greater than, so if you're not at that eight, math, in sixth grade you're there at greater than, less than, right? Okay. Grace, <laughs> I hope so. Um, grace is greater than sin. That's your math problem. And I really want it, you know, it's underlined there, but you really can put the word always there. Grace is greater than sin always, right? Remember that. Remember that in your life. Grace is greater than sin always. Sin is destructive. It's evil. It's against God. There's nothing good about sin. Nothing. It destroys. It disrupts. It causes death. But even as bad I'm describing sin, grace is greater than that. Always, right? It's greater than sin. It's more powerful than sin. And I, I, I was your age at one point in time. This can be a kind of a tough concept to understand, right? Because when you think about sin at your age, you're thinking about like things that like things that are said to you, things that you may say, things that people do. You may watch the news and you just hear about horrible things that happen like in big cities or I don't know if you watch the news like I don't, but I'm, I'm sure you're up on current events like all the time where like there's school shootings, there's all this kind of like sexual predators that live in all these communities like all these things happen, right? And you're thinking like what is God say about that? What does God do about that, right? And the reality is, as sinful as man is, grace is always greater than that, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a tough concept to understand um, at your age, but eventually um, you got to understand that God covers uh, that sin. Or you may be thinking about like, hey, my sin is so bad. I've hurt so many people. God will never forgive me. Let me close with this. So in Romans chapter 3, Verse 23, I think we're going to have it on the screen. I, I grabbed the new, or the good news translation. Verse 23 is a very famous verse, right? Like if you've studied the Bible for at least like a day or so, you have know this verse. Verse 23, everyone has sinned and is far away from God's saving presence. You may have, you know, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You may have heard it said that way. That's Romans 3.23. We don't talk about 24 and 25 that often. Read this with me. So it says, but by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right with him 
through Christ Jesus who sets them free. There's no dwelling. God's not dwelling on your sin. You messed up today. No doubt about it. I, there's not one of you that could come up to me and John right now and said, I was perfect today. Nobody. Let's try that again. <laughs> we have one perfect here. The rest of us made some mistakes. But you get the idea. No one can say, I did it all right today. Right. But this verse 24 is saying, God will make that right. Right? He has forgot your disappointment that you caused. Verse 25. God offered him, Christ, so that by his blood he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. In the past, he, God, was patient and overlooked people's sins. But in the present time, he deals with their sins in order to demonstrate his righteousness. In this way, God shows that he himself is righteous and that he puts right everyone who believes in Jesus. That is the definition of grace. God makes it right again. You messed up. I messed up. Jean messed up. We messed up today. But God, through grace, makes it right again. And we can choose to accept that, which hopefully you do, or we can choose to dwell on those mistakes. And the fact is God is much bigger than we are, and his grace is much greater. All right, so last thing I want to say. So you guys are in school right now. I would say the stakes in life are a little low, right? As you get older, the stakes get higher, right? You're in middle school or high school. Your focus right now is like a few key things. Get good grades, don't make mom and dad mad, right? If you can accomplish those two things, uh, success, good. right? Right. Uh, then you go to college. The stakes get a little bit higher, right? Uh, so yeah, you're still focused on your grades, but now you've got to start thinking about like... Uh, what am I going to do after this? Uh, I have to get a job. I have to get a career. Where am I going to live? The stakes get higher, right, once you get to college, right? And then you graduate college, and maybe you start a family. You have a wife. You have a husband. You have kids. And the stakes are really high because now people are counting on you. The first two scenarios I laid out, you're really only caring about yourself, right? I, I have to get good grades. I have to not make mom and dad mad. I have to figure out career. I have to figure out how to graduate college but then after that, now you're counting on yourself. You have to provide for yourself, but you also have to be accountable uh, to someone bigger. And what Jean and I described tonight is hopefully you can figure out how to deal with this grace and this disappointment now. Figure out how to deal with disappointment now when the stakes are low. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit lower because when the stakes get higher, the disappointment gets a little bit higher, right? And the hurt gets a little bit higher. And, the, and the, the consequences for decisions get exponentially higher, right? And to be honest with you, I don't know, John, if you want to say anything, but like as you get a little bit older, you almost don't want to forgive as easy, right? When you're younger, it's like, uh, well, they just you know, said something silly to me. I can move on. Now it's like I can't move on. So you have to learn how to deal with disappointment, regret, shame, guilt, all those things that are in the flame. Now, because the battles just get more intense, and the last verse I have is Romans 6, 14. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you're not under the law, but you're under what? Grace. You are not bound by sin. You are not controlled by sin. You don't have to do the bad things that you're doing. And those, it, it, you can move past those things, and that's really the, the beauty of, of that song. You can move on. It's over now. So I don't know about you, John, but... We don't have to live on the wheel of unfortunate, right? Well, we played the game, and you had to go through it, but um, that's not a place that you have to live. You definitely can move past it. You don't have to carry that burden of disappointment. You definitely can move on. So uh, I'm going to pray us out, and then uh, Anna, you'll probably come up and give some instructions. Anything you want to add, John? No. All oh. said. Let's pray. God, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your word. And uh, we covered... Uh, um, pretty meaty subject and topic tonight, God. I just pray these students, whatever age they are, whatever grade they are, whatever life stage that they're in, whatever home situation, school situation that they have, all of this applies. All of it applies. It's all relevant because it's your word. It's your teaching. It's truth. We can't run from that. And so, God, we just pray that we all walk out of this building 
just a little bit different than we came in, and different in a good way, different that we learn something, different than we, we can take those things that, yes, are disappointment, and we can just move on, that we can just lay it down. What's in front of us is much more valuable than what's behind us. In the past, it is broken, God. We just pray that we can and move past that. God, we pray tonight for life groups. We pray for fruitful conversation. God, we just pray that most of all, that we are a body that brings you honor and glory and brings glory to your name. Help us to make heaven incredibly crowded and make your name extremely famous. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, give it up for Mr. Rich and Mr. Jean and what Jesus just did through them.